All right, let's talk scientific method, okay? So there's been scientists around for a long time and they've been working on hypotheses and theories and, and trying to figure out so much about our world and everything that lives in it and even outside of our world, right? And after some time they realize, you know what, we really need to have a method here because if we're all just kind of doing our own thing and we're all discovering different things, that's not quite right. So they developed this scientific method that has several steps, okay? First you need to observe. Observe means that you watch something closely. It's not just like you glance at it, but you really pay attention to it. When you observe something, oftentimes you're taking notes, you're paying attention to small details. So observe is the first step. The next step is a question. That's when you ask a question or you identify a problem, okay? So oftentimes in nature, there are problems or questions that we have. So for instance, to tell you something I've observed in my garden, is I have observed that slugs are eating some of my seedlings, okay? That is a problem. I have slugs that are eating my seedlings in my garden. How do I get rid of the slugs? That's my question. How can I get rid of the slugs? Next, research, okay? We're not the first people to have a problem with a slug. There's people that have done other things before. We can research and see what other people have done before us and learn from them and then build on that, okay? We don't have to start at ground zero. Do some research, find out what other people know. Then come up with your hypothesis. A hypothesis is like a smart guess. It's not just some crazy idea. You take the research, what you learned here, and then you try to build on that and come up with a smart guess to move on, okay? Then you do an experiment. You have to design an experiment so that you're testing only one thing. You can't change a whole bunch of things and then say it was this. You have to design an experiment and design it in such a way that there's only one difference between the two so that you know that the effect that you're measuring is really due to that difference, okay? You have to be careful in designing your experiment and then you test that hypothesis. You do your experiment, you take your data, and then you test your hypothesis. Was I right? Was I wrong? Did we learn something here? And oftentimes, believe it or not, we learn more from experiments that don't go the way we thought they would than ones that do go the way they thought they would, okay? So just because your hypothesis might not pan out, that doesn't mean that we didn't learn from it, okay? We still draw conclusions. Our conclusion may be that, hey, our hypothesis was right. We're moving in the right direction. Our conclusion may be, you know what? We just found out something we had no idea was true, and now we're gonna go down a completely different path. Finally, report. You need to share your results, okay? That's when the writing comes in. Remember I said this week our writing was gonna come in with science? We need to report our learnings so future scientists, when they do their research, they can learn from what we did too. That's how we as people can build off of each other's knowledge and become better and better scientists who know more and more about our world. But we need to follow this scientific method in order for our research to be valid, okay? So we are gonna do a study on slugs. That's my problem. And the next thing we observed, I observed, I found those silly things eating my seedlings. I came up with the question, how can I get them out of my garden? I wanna get rid of the slugs. Next, I need to do the research. Let's get that done.